Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Aries for April 2016. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, where you can see my astrology blog. I also write on other topics. And while you're there, sign up for my free email newsletter and become part of my community. So what's going on in April? First of all, we have birthdays for the April-born Aries. And we have more news coming in from these eclipses. If you haven't listened to my March report, you definitely want to do that for your sun sign and your rising sign because March contains two eclipses whose effects will last well beyond March. So to have a solid understanding of the themes of things to come and the closing up of things that have been going on for a while, you need to check out that report. It's very comprehensive. It's also especially important for Aries because it involves a cycle of Aries Libra eclipses that end with this cycle. So definitely check that out. Eclipses often bring in life-changing news, and by now many of you might have received that news. Some of it might have been great, some of it might have been awful, and maybe you got both of the pieces of news, or maybe you are a person who is seeing people around you being drastically affected by new information and you are just kind of holding space. So all of these things are potentials. Let's talk about birthdays. So if you are a March born Aries, then you had your birthday already. But for the rest of you, it's birthday time. The universe is never more receptive to your desires than on your birthday. That's where birthday wishes come from. Birthday wishes are astrological. So you get your birthday wishes and you say them out loud. You write them down and you feel them as if they're coming true. April also contains the date that, that is the other day that is the best time to do your wishes, which is, or, or in set your intentions, which is April 7th. April 7th is a very astrologically important day because it's the new moon in Aries. The astrological calendar, the astrological new year starts when the sun moves into Aries. And so the new moon that follows that, the new moon in Aries, is the best time besides your birthday to do a vision board. If you're not using vision boards, Ah, and you're interested in manifesting wonderful things in your life and the, the life of your dreams, you've got to use vision boards. And this month is the most potent time. You've got a birthday, some of you. If you've already had your birthday and you didn't do your wishes because you didn't know, that's fine. You've got this new moon in Aries day to make a vision board. You can do an online vision board. You can look up more details to see what it is. But in general, it's a board that you put the essence of what you want to create phrases, pictures, things that carry the energy of what you want more of. And this is twofold because if you do this, or the effects are twofold, because if you do this on with good astrological timing, you are setting in motion the, the strong chance for your wishes to be fulfilled or your vision to be fulfilled. But then if you also keep your vision board somewhere where you can see it regularly, your subconscious mind, which leads your experiences, is picking up on that and it's like a faithful servant it's quite literal so what you surround yourself by your subconscious mind picks up on it and says oh you want more of that okay i'll give you more of that so this vision board will say whatever you want more abundance more love more free time better health and your subconscious mind is picking up on it saying okay i'm going to put things in motion through experiences and opportunities that allow you to create the things that you want because you've shown me that's the direction you want to go in so it's very very powerful so the March born Aries or the earlier degree ascendant placements like zero through nine degrees or so will have already by the time April comes have walked through the movement of the sun through the 12th house and some of the other personal planets as well. And now is a time for rebirth, for new beginnings, for clean slates, for starting everything over again and really um, bursting out from the very internal place that those four weeks before your birthday or before the sun crossing over your ascendant brings. The middle degree placements and late degree placements, so again, to, to remember so you can place yourself here. If you were born from the beginning of, whether it's March 20th or 21st, through around the 30th, you're an early degree placement, from March 31st through around April 9th, you're a middle degree placement. And then April 10th through the 20th or the end of the sign, 
is the later degree placements and the same for the degrees for your ascendance. So zero to nine degrees is early, 10 to 19 is middle and 20 to 29 is late. It's important to differentiate between these because the chart looks different depending on where your placement is. So it's very relevant, otherwise I wouldn't take the time to do it. So for you who have had your birthday already, these planets that were all clustered in the 12th house starting to move into the first house are bringing your new beginnings and your new, um, your new slate and your, your vigor, you're stepping out of this internal place. But the 12th house is the step before that and that's where the middle degree and later degree placements still are. The 12th house is the house of the deep unconscious. It's the house of your deepest fears and your deepest potential. It's kind of like an attic, you know, maybe things have been there from previous family members, maybe things have been there from previous owners of the house. Like you don't really know what's up there. There could be things that are worth money, there could be treasure, there could be a whole bunch of crap, broken chairs and whatever, you know, stuff that just needs to get out of there. But in any case, the four weeks before your birthday or before the sun crosses over your ascendant and brings the energy of new beginnings as well, you have this for around four weeks, it's three to five weeks depending on certain factors in your chart, but you have this period of time where you evaluate the problems. So the sun putting a spotlight in this attic of your deep unconscious mind, which is where the middle and later degree placements still are as we start April, this is really making you see the things you don't want and the things you're really over and the things you're really done with and then you can line up your birthday wishes or your intentions with the new things that you want. It's really hard to create new things if you're not clear about what you want and this transit helps you to become clear about what you don't want which helps you to be more clear about what you do want. Some people can suffer tremendously with it though. You can get very anxious if you don't know what's going on I would have uh, around the month before my birthday always feel weird and anxious and have weird things going on and I, it took me a long time to figure out what was happening. Now I understand when the sun lights up the place where you sweep things under the rug, then it can get kind of nasty in there, you know? So in many years past, I used to escape from it because I didn't know any better and I just dealt with the anxiety and many people will start to party or something before their birthday or when they feel that anxiety to just kind of make it stop but it doesn't get you anywhere. So deep inner work, anything having to do with working with your dreams, hypnosis, past life regression, working with um, subliminal programming, meditation, affirmations, the emotional freedom technique, anything that helps you to get the garbage out of your mind and make it more clear is going to help you tremendously. There's an amazing book called, gosh, I don't know if I'm gonna get it exactly right, but it's something like The Magic the Magical Art of Tidying Up, something like that, and it's by Marie Kondo, K-O-N-D-O. This book is about cleaning your external space out, but it turns out that when you clean your external space out, you also help to clean your internal space out. It can bring massive transformation by matching the hologram of your external to your internal. We tend to hold energy in places in our house that correspond with different parts of our mind and our energy field, which is kind of crazy. So to go about it this way is something else that you could do in this period of time, especially middle and late degree placements if you have a bunch of stuff coming up. This new moon is really important because it's the new moon in your sign or for your rising sign, so it carries more energy. And again, the early placements are going to have, the, and some of the middle degree placements are going to have this happen in the first house. So it's like, boom, new vitality, new sense of self, new direction, new um, maybe even physically changing certain things that align more with what you're working on, things like that. And then the rest of you will have this new moon in your 12th house. I'm hoping that the new moon in my 12th house, I have Aries rising, and all this energy in the 12th house for me means I'm going to sleep better and more. I've had multiple reasons that have kept me from sleeping for previous years, one of them being Uranus sitting on my ascendant. If you have Uranus on your ascendant, you might be suffering with the same thing. But in any case, the 12th house is the house of sleep. So it's possible that you can start to sleep better with that new moon there, which would be awesome. So the, okay, this month is very important 
because Mars goes retrograde and Mercury goes retrograde. If you haven't listened to my previous reports, February and March, I recommend that you definitely at least listen to Marches. I've said that before because of the eclipses, but there's another reason. March is a time that I've recommended for trying to push things forward if you have things ready to launch because April and May and June and most of July are not that time. So if you have something pending and you think, oh, I'll launch in the summer or, or I'll launch in the late spring, you probably shouldn't do that because Mars will be retrograde. Mars goes retrograde once every two years. And it's especially important to Aries because Mars is your ruler. So whatever your ruler is doing affects you more. You, if you're an Aries or have Aries rising, you absolutely have to watch my Mars retrograde video. I think it's good for everyone to do it, but you've got to get a handle on what this transit's doing because it started at the end of February and it goes all the way into August if you're considering the shadow periods. So it's actually retrograde from April 17th through June 29th, but the shadow periods extend on either end where it's like a six month experience. And there are certain things it's not indicated to do very important things like not initiating, um, you know, suing someone and just things that you might not think of that are associated with this that you need to know about. So if you search for Mars Retrograde Annie Botticelli or go to my YouTube channel and search for Mars Retrograde, you can see that there. You can also see my Mars Retrograde blog if you go to AnnieHelpsYou.com and click on blog and do a search for Mars. It's like a, a summary and bullet point version with, um, you know, just, it's basically easier for you to use for your planning. So I would watch the video and look at the blog to help you understand how, what to not do in that period of time, which shows you what would be good for you to do in March. You really have to capitalize on the energy that you have still. That's why I post these a month before. If you're a subscriber, you'll get this, all of my um, videos a month before the actual month that I'm talking about. So for your planning purposes, I do that. Okay, so Mars is going to go retrograde and things will start slowing down. For many Aries, this might come with lots of frustration and anger because we want to move forward. And if there's an impediment to that, we get pissed off. Straight up, that's how it goes, you know? But there are certain aspects of the way we are that are dysfunctional. And there are certain aspects of the way we are that is just how energy moves through us. So when Mars is in retrograde, it gives you a really major opportunity to heal the dysfunctional part. So like if you're not forgiving someone and that's part of why you're so angry, you know, I mean, I think Aries people in general are always going to be annoyed when two people are too slow um, or things are too slow, you know, but there's a difference between a minor annoyance and like a major frustration and anger issue. If we're not forgiving someone and we think someone owes us something, then someone's gonna be tapping on our shoulder saying, hey, you owe me something. And this usually comes in the form of debt. So debt is actually something that you could help to clear by doing work with the Mars retrograde cycle and understanding it. So it's not a good time for a lot of things, but it is a great time for other things. And most of those other things that it's a great time for are internal, doing anger work, doing psychological things. You know, that book, The Presence Process by Michael Brown that I always talk about, awesome. Um, there's um, many, 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 many books. And I talk about the Ho'oponopono. The Ho'oponopono is a Hawaiian forgiveness prayer that is amazing. It's like a karma blaster. It just blasts the karma for you not forgiving someone and people thinking you owe them something. It just like eradicates the whole cycle. So it's important for you to shift gears because what's happening in April is like, Personal planets are in Aries. The sun is there at the beginning of the month. Mercury is there. Then Venus gets there in the beginning of the month. And so all this Aries energy is moving forward. And then this wall of retrograde is coming and just like putting the kibosh on the Aries forward movement. Because not only Mars is in retrograde, Mercury goes in retrograde on April 28th and the shadow period starts April 2nd. So the whole month of April is, sh you know, showered with this retrograde energy, which goes backwards. And you can get more insight on what Mercury retrograde entails and the do's and don'ts there by searching on my channel for my Mercury retrograde video. I can't go over all the specifics in each video because there's way too much stuff to talk about, but definitely watch that one. So April 28th through May 21st, Mercury's in retrograde and the confusions and the, you know, things with 
devices and vehicles and mobility and things that Mercury rules, those are also going to come up. So it doesn't mean that you can't do anything in this time. It just means launching new things, making new commitments, taking things like in romance or business a step further in the form of like major advancement. Those things are not indicated, but fine tuning things you've already launched or that you're already in and following through with commitments you've already made, all of those things are fine. It's just the new things that are troublesome in that time. You know, the initiations, the, the things that, well, that Aries is so good at and loves to do all the time is just burst forth to the next thing, burst forth to the next thing, you know? So a summary of what's happening here, we've got Eclipse News still coming in, refer to the March scope for that. We've got the energies of Aries wanting to move forward, colliding with the wall of retrograde. So that makes you have to be very discerning with how you use your energy. The recommendation that I'm making for this month and actually April, May and June and beginning of July is to only do the things you really have to do. And the way that I'm titling this month, the beachy vibe, keeping the beachy vibe. So what I mean by that is if you're on a beach and you're very relaxed, and you have your lounge chair, and you have all the things that make you feel calm, and then you leave that space, and you start thinking about all the things you have to do, and then you start getting crazy, and you start running around like crazy. And then you get really stressed, then Mars is retrograde, Mercury is retrograde, so you're like banging your head against the wall trying to push things forward, the wall of retrograde is coming back, washing over you, pushing you backwards, and it's then you get angry and frustrated, and it's not good times. So, if you fine tune your list of things to do, write the list of things you think you need to do, then start to take things off. What can you delegate? What can you just let go of completely? What can you put off for later? You know, then you get a narrowed down list. Then within that list, start asking some deeper questions. Like, why do I always have so much going on? Why do I always feel like I'm struggling? Why do I always have conflict? You know, whatever things that are based on your to-do list, Ask the deeper questions because Mars is giving you this amazing chance at making your energy more efficient. All retrogrades give this opportunity, but especially Mars retrograde because Mars rules how you use your energy. So when it's pushing backwards like this, you can look at how energy moves through you in a way that's dysfunctional, not serving you, and how you can work smarter instead of harder. There was a time in my life when I worked 80 hours a week. I do not work 80 hours a week now because I've used these transits to see how I don't need to do that in order to meet my objectives. And this period of time is something that you can use to do the same thing, to really cut your work week, you know, cut your work back, cut your, um, just the daily things that take so long to do things smarter and much more efficiently. So instead of using this, Let's see, this much energy to get this much gain. We want you to use this much energy for this much gain. And Mars retrograde gives you that opportunity and April is wonderful for that. So if you take your narrow down list and you only do those things, the odds that you can keep the beachy vibe are higher because you're not struggling and trying to do so many things. You're being very discerning and careful with what you're trying to do and that decreases the chances for anger and frustration. So these are the general themes. If you want some assistance personally, you can go to my website, anniehelpsyou.com and check out my coaching package. You can also sign up for my free email newsletter, which makes you part of my VIP crew and you get perks that go along with that, including a write-up of the astrology of the month before so that you have more for your planning purposes. And while you're there, definitely check out my Train Your Brain programs because these are subliminal programs that I have put together for different topics. And since you have all this energy in the 12th house, I mean, I think subliminal programming is awesome anytime, no matter what the planets are doing. But when you have all that energy in the 12th house and you're rebirthing stuff now into the first house, that's a time where you really want to get new neuronal pathways built in your brain so that it creates new pathways of experience in your life. And that's what they're intended to do. And that's what they're very effective at doing. So check it out, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Check out my blogs and have a wonderful month. I'll see you next month. Bye.